Hi there, this is Sergio with the Rideshare Guide. Today I'm joined by Drew Crisman, who is our fourth Show Me the Extra Mile Sunshine Award winner. And, and you know, we're going to talk about uh, his story, obviously. But Drew, first of all, welcome. No, yeah, thank you for having me, Sergio. It's an it's an honor to be uh, even recognized for that award. And uh, I appreciate appreciate you for that. Uh, it, it's so well deserved. You know, it, it's we we talked about you actually uh, on Tuesday on our Show Me the Money live stream. And uh, you know, quick story here. Um, I, you know, DM'd uh, Drew yesterday, not expecting you know a response because first of all, he's an NFL player, right? What NFL player is going to respond to some guy who's called a ride share guy? But sure enough, within ten minutes, he responded, and here we are. We're doing our interview. But Drew, let's go a little bit about you know where you were born, um, you know your history in college football, and now that you're in the NFL, give us a little bit of background about that. Sure. Um, so I grew up in a small town, Lawrenceburg, Indiana, actually where I'm currently at and living still. Um, I went to college, and I mean I went to high school in Cincinnati. So um, now I'm working in Cincinnati. So I'm very familiar with this drive from. Indiana to Cincinnati, Ohio. When people people hear that I'm coming from Indiana, they think that like I'm taking a plane or something. It's really only like a half hour away. I'm li I'm literally just crossing the border um, and hopping over the river, and you know I'm in I'm in Cincinnati, so it's not that bad of a commute. Um, but then I went to college in Columbus, so I just love me some Ohio. I've been in Ohio basically my my whole life. Had a fantastic five years there. And then um, I signed as an undrafted free agent to the Bengals and just kind of put my time in and eventually broke through the uh, starting roster uh, near the end of the year last year and and uh, hopefully continue to have many successful sex successful seasons going forward and uh, also uh, be able to give back a little bit in the spare time as well. Yeah, I we're going to talk about that in a minute, but it, it, it was it your childhood dream to go to uh, become a Buckeye and go to Ohio State and become an NFL player? Uh, I didn't watch too much college actually um, growing up, but I, I did. I went to my fair share of uh, Cincinnati Bengals games. I, I have some very fond memories of going with my dad and and sitting in the jungle they call it and and uh, watching uh, some fun teams back then. And it, it was a very surreal moment. I think my dad even teared up when I eventually told him that I was going to be the starting punter um, when I got the news. So. It was, it was a very emotional season last year, kind of a roller coaster, but that's just kind of the NFL in general. Um, you know, every week you just never know what's going to happen when you're going to be able to get an opportunity. And so you just got to make the best of it when it comes because it might not happen again. And I was fortunate to uh, to take advantage of that opportunity. That's awesome. So um, first of all, I know NFL players make decent money, right? So obviously <laughs> you have some financial security, although you may be new, you know, in the NFL. But your your career probably is going to be a prolonged one as a punter. So um, my you know where I discovered you is, is on you know I checked one day you showed up in my newsfeed last week and I'm like wow look at this gentleman you know he's like doing DoorDash and feeding the hungry in his city of Cincinnati and I I was fascinated by it because. That's why we do, you know, on our channel. Obviously, we try to inform and educate drivers regarding the gig economy. But besides that, you know, about four weeks ago, we started doing this thing called Show Me the Extra Mile Sunshine Award. We interview drivers and do articles about them, about amazing things that they do for their passengers and pay it forward and 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 be great citizens and amazing human beings. So we did a segment, as I said previously, you know, on you. Um, and now I want you to, you know, take as long as you want, explain how this came to you, you know, doing DoorDash, earning some extra cash on the side, and then feeding the hungry or the homeless in your city. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned, you know, the whole giving back generosity of it. It really didn't, that wasn't the end goal, actually, at, at the beginning of it. Um, maybe just knowing myself and just kind of the history of you know, how I enjoy giving back in charity. I did a little bit in college. Maybe I could have thought it could have ended up in that way, but it started off as just a way to earn, I mean, get a little extra exercise during this time. Um, so I don't know how familiar you are with the NFL 
uh, season or off season, but we have OTAs for about a month, sometimes two months. And then we have about a month and a half off and then training camp starts and then it goes straight into the season. So you kind of got to find a way for this month and a half off here to, to stay in shape and, you know, get ready for the season in a way. And um, we have a one-year-old now, my wife and I. So most of the time I go traveling down to a kicking coach in Alabama, but traveling is a little more uh, difficult when you're you're not doing, doing it by yourself and you bring in the pack and play and all this stuff. So we just decided like, hey, we can get a good workout here. I work out at the facility still, uh, but – you know, you're always trying to find, you know, a better way to get stronger, bigger, faster. And um, I actually debated getting a Peloton. I don't know. Yeah. So Peloton is probably never going to sponsor me for saying this, but I just could not dish out that kind of money for something that's become going to become a coat rack, you know, yeah. in a month from now. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, your phone's always listening. And they said hey, they must have picked up on the conversation and it showed me a video on Instagram of a guy doing DoorDash. I believe it was in Washington, D.C. Okay. And he was doing it on a bike. And I was like, I've never seen this before. I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, people delivering food on on just a bicycle or e-bike. And it just it, for some reason just resonated with me like, oh, this is this is this is what I should be doing. Like, this, this sounds fun. I get to hang out in the city. Cincinnati is close enough. Everything's close enough to where you can do it on a bicycle. Yeah. Um, so I was like, this it, and it's great exercise as well. Um, so I've been, so I did it for a couple of weeks. Um, just had fun with it. Got to enjoy the weather. The weather's turning for the better here. Got to see the city from like a whole new perspective. Yeah. And, and I was like, I, I had made videos in college a little bit. I did like trick shots with bottle flipping. Right. Um, that was kind of my thing, the uh, the bottle flipping punter. And so I enjoyed making videos. So I started making some videos of it because literally every time you get an order, it's like a whole new world of possibilities could happen. It's like a whole story in itself from, yeah. you know, whatever happens at the restaurant to picking up the food or on route to deliver it. You know, something crazy happens on the street or um, even the person accepting the food, you know, what story they have that day. And I was like, this is just the creator, the creative part of me is like this people might enjoy this. And so I slapped the GoPro to my head, started making some, started making some uh, content and, you know, naturally I'm doing a job. You mentioned that, you know, I'm an NFL athlete. I don't necessarily need the income, but it's kind of funny back in the day before NFL and sports got as big as it, as it has, people did have to do odd jobs. You know, athletes had to do odd jobs in the summer to, you know, have that revenue before the season came back. Um, but with with where sports are at now, yeah. certainly the income is is it's to the point where it's almost ridiculous. You know, well, it you doesn't know, even what well, you said, what well, you said is so valid because I've been in the gig economy since 2015, right? Okay. Uh, I live in Los Angeles. It's a big city, like you know, maybe bigger than Cincinnati, obviously. But uh by doing rideshare and having passengers in the car, meeting these people, right? And going to corners of LA that I had never seen. I've been in LA for over 20 years, right? So gig work actually is amazing for you to reclaim your city, re-figure out where the nooks and crannies are and and how many interesting people that you can meet through doing gig work. So so you got you got a bike, right? Well, you, well DoorDash, you can do with a bicycle, e-bike, scooter, car, whatever you want, right? As long as you keep yourself within the, you know, within the area. Now, yep. so you got a bike, you want to stay in shape. So you're trying to kill two birds with one stone, right? And now you you figured out what restaurants you to pick up at, who makes you wait, you know all this stuff, and you're doing some content, and you're not alone on that either. By the way, there are so many YouTube content creators when it comes to the gig economy. They call it ride-alongs. They'll just okay. record themselves and then they put it on YouTube and people watch it. And so you know you're you're not you're not alone on that. But so at some point though, right, you started doing deliveries and you're riding your bike around your city. What did you see? I mean, what, was there a need for something for you to to switch from just making some extra cash to paying it forward? No, yeah, you you definitely mentioned it. Um, I, I doing it on a bike. I was able to see the city from you know a whole new perspective. You know, on the ground level, going through the back alleyways, trying to get you know find the quickest way to a restaurant or someone house someone's house. You know, something you don't see just on the you know the daily commute into work and then back home. Yeah. And, you know, Cincinnati is a beautiful city. You know, it, it, I think there's a lot of great things going on in the city. But seeing it from that perspective, 
you recognize there's a need. Um, you know, I'd see people on the street um, looking, you know, rather malnourished or just needing something to help them get through the day or panhandling, even just asking for literally anything. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it really pulled out my heartstrings, um, especially the city that I've, you know, been in for so long. I went to high school in Cincinnati and now I'm working professionally in Cincinnati. And then um, I know that I have this opportunity to be able to give back in a way. And uh, the little bit of money that I'm, I'm making through DoorDash by doing a couple hours a day, it just started a compound and I didn't really know exactly what to do with it. Um, and then I just thought there has to be a way for me to, you know, make some kind of small impact in this city. And um, so I started using that money to buy food from local restaurants and then hand out that food to really just anybody I kind of saw on the street. Um, I'd go to parks where, you know, there'd be some large gatherings of people and just, you know, lay out the food and say, hey, I hope this helps, you know, whatever you have going on in your life, whatever you need this day, hope it just makes it a little bit easier. And I know a good meal can do that. Um, you know, it's something I've never had to really stress about where my next meal was coming mm -hmm. from. And certainly I don't think anybody in, in the U.S. should ever have to worry about. And uh, yeah, I 100 percent, I 100 percent agree with you because we have the same situation in L.A. We have a major homelessness situation and you know up in san francisco but so you're you're dashing a couple hours a day right you're staying in shape right and you're seeing your city as you said from a new perspective and and you're also meeting these people who are down on their luck and well, for one reason or another because they weren't born like that right things happen in their lives that they were probably not in control of and then they ended up there and and usually you decided to help by buying food from restaurants and handing out the food. Now, I know from reading your story, obviously, you know, DoorDash got a hold of you, right? DoorDash <laughs> figured out what you were doing, right? And yeah. then, so what did they do for you? Yeah, in a way, DoorDash kind of gave me a raise. Um, I work for a, a wonderful company in, that, in, <laughs> in the DoorDash. Um, so they've reached out to me and they're going to double all of my earnings for the next two weeks. Um, anything that I make while I'm, um, you know, doing deliveries on the bike, they're also going to donate a thousand dollars to a charity of my choice um, in the city. So, yeah, hats off to them. Certainly, they didn't have to do that, but I think in a way, you know, they were kind of touched by the story too, and they know that, you know, everything's going to go to a good cause. And um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to uh, work with them more in the future. It's going to be a fun two weeks here. See how much uh, how much money we can really raise. Yeah, so you're only doing a couple hours a day, right? And 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 uh, I mean, you you said you have two weeks. So after two weeks, I'm assuming you know uh, training camp starts, and you'll be, you'll be back to your uh, day job, as they say it, right? Yeah, and the, uh, yeah, the day job, the, it, the 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 schedule does pick up quite a bit in in the next coming weeks. Uh, but you know, people ask like, is this just a summer hobby kind of thing? But you know, with with the fun that I'm having and the impact that I'm able to make. And, uh, you know, I felt like this is something I I'd been missing the last couple of years. I've been so focused just on football and, you know, making it as an NFL athlete and, you know, it paid off. I made, like I said, I broke through and I was able to get to a roster and, you know, fulfill the childhood dream of playing for the hometown. Um, but it still felt like there was, there was missing, something was missing. Okay. And I think this was that, you know, be able to give back and use this platform to, you know, help out someone in, you know, a less fortunate situation. So I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Maybe there might be less time, you know, spent on the bike. Uh, but I've had multiple restaurants in the city and Skyline and Gold Star, you know, local chili places that are kind of famous in Cincinnati reach out and want to donate hundreds of meals. Um, so basically, so I can just go out and, and give throughout the city in any way that I choose. So um, I think there's still going to be lots more avenues for me to, you know, make an impact and maybe out in a greater scale um, than it already is. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, um, most athletes, right, don't do enough of what you're doing, to be perfectly honest with you, because they're so blessed and lucky to be where they are, because only one in a, you know, million or five million make it to the top level, right? And once they make it, you know, some of them forget where they came from or, you know, how much good they can do with just a little uh, work. And, and you're doing that. So you mentioned the restaurants. I'm sure a lot of these restaurants, you know, have a lot of food that they throw out at the end of the day. I mean, it's not bad food, but it's just not used. Right. So yeah. did you create some sort of a food bank or foundation? Are you working with a food bank? Well, how's that working out? Like are the restaurants basically putting out the food for people to pick up? How's that going? 
So the restaurants are just kind of reaching out to me via social media okay. and they're saying, Hey, uh, you know, we can make so-and-so amount of tacos or okay. we got some extra pieces here. Um, and you know, we kind of, so far the last couple of times I've gone and done it, they work out of like, Oh, we got some kind of discount for you. Like we're going to be half off. And I'm like, sweet. You know, that's amazing. Like that's going to make my DoorDash money go even further and be able to help more people. And when I actually pull up to the restaurant, they're like, it's on us. Don't worry about it. It's free. I'm just like, <laughs> and now, now all of a sudden I've got like kind of an excess amount of DoorDash money and all these restaurants are giving me, uh, the food for free. So um it I, i've been just incredibly blessed and i've gotten to the point now where i'm just handing out cash to people who are just kind of panhandling on the street it, it's got to that point i've i'm gotten so much kind of free food uh thrown at me and i think that's just a testament to just you know the city um right. the city really cares about its people and uh you know when they hear this story you know like yourself they were kind of touched as well and, and wanted to support it in any way possible and and I appreciate them putting trust in myself that I'm going to give all these resources and, um, you know, use it for a good. So in a way, you know, hats off to them trusting me uh, with this little I mean, bit of power that they're giving me. I, I, you know, social media is great, obviously. And, and you know, I'm, I'm a follower on your Twitter feed now, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, this is a personal question, but I saw you, I watched your Twitter feed immediately. Of course, you know, once we did the story on you uh, on Show Me The Money a couple of days ago. You know, I saw your famous uh, proposal <laughs> to your current <laughs> wife, obviously, right? To your yeah. probably high school sweetheart. I'm not going to guess, but you'll, you'll, you'll let us know on that one. And it was done where? Where was it done? Like, it was... <laughs> it was done in this uh, nice little venue called the uh, the Shoe. <laughs> yeah, there only 80,000 people. <laughs> About 80 plus thousand. Who knows on how many on TV? Um, yeah, I would... Uh, I would be in trouble tonight if I didn't say that was certainly the highlight of probably my life, if not my uh, my career in, in college. Um, that was a very special moment, and certainly certainly the the peak um, in my social media presence while I was in college. It, it blew up uh, pretty well, and I, I certainly got recognized more so for that than being you know an Ohio State Buckeye for the remainder of my years while I was in college. And uh, yeah, I was actually, you say high school sweetheart. She was actually my, uh, my neighbor growing up. So oh, wow, she's right here in, in uh, hometown, little, the girl next door. Um, but we really didn't start getting close until college. So I was uh, certainly friend zone for a number of years. And, uh, you know, I say the, the friend zone to the end zone, I, I was able to make it. And she said, yes. And uh, finished my career off as a Buckeye and, yeah, now we've got a one-year-old, so you know that story. That story luckily has a good ending. Yeah, it's, a, it's all different chapters in in people's lives, right? You know, you grow up, you get married. Now I have a one-year-old, and I mean, you know, I obviously am much older than you, and I have a couple of kids myself. And you know, you're going to enjoy that chapter of your life too, right? Because kids, you know, now you have NFL. You're an NFL athlete, and 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 to me, what you have done, seriously, I mean, it, it, this is to me what every human being should aspire to do really because with just a little bit of work we can get so much done and i don't think enough of it is done enough you know enough good news is not out there there's always some something bad and people just enjoy reading bad i guess you know what i mean to me it's like it's just completely the opposite you should be the headline on cnn every day not <laughs> some other thing you know what i'm saying but um so uh, you have a couple of more weeks. May I ask, like, how much money you make uh, doing DoorDash in a couple of hours? Uh, so if I catch lunch rush, uh, yeah. I, I can probably pull fifty to sixty dollars in just a three-hour span. Probably about twenty dollars an hour. Um, Eleven to two is yeah. typically when I catch like the peak. Um, and then I haven't done too much dinner. I plan on doing a little bit more dinner in the, in the future. Well, I heard dinner on a bike. You got to be careful dinner on a, because you know, you have cars. It's late. Yeah. You know, I've heard that too. Yeah. I've spoken like a true veteran though. Right. I mean, you know, we I have, have learned. Been, Trust have me, been, there's some learning curves. Yeah, yeah, there is definitely a learning curve. I mean, there, we have a saying on, on, on show me the money, you know, we go no tip, no trip. So make sure you only pick up tipped orders. No, no base fare, $2 orders for you. So you can make yeah. the most amount of money you can. Um, with the remaining few minutes, you know, I'm just going to uh, um, obviously congratulate you. And and obviously I invited you and you committed, but we'll see where that goes. 
Um, you know, we do this live stream is very popular. We have over 150,000 subscribers. Um, we would love to have you on, obviously, on Show Me The Money. It's every Tuesday at 3. But we'll discuss that. It's going to be in a couple of weeks. And if you're still um, available, we'll definitely would love to have you on. Um, I I am thrilled to meet you. Uh, he meet you, obviously. But hopefully one day maybe I'll meet you in person. And and uh, and I am, uh, you know, honored and 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 really, truly, truly, it's my pleasure to have spoken to you. Now, with what we can do, you know, we, we want to join the bandwagon, obviously. Um, you know, we want to donate $200 to a charity of your choosing. Whatever, wherever it goes, you just let us know and then we'll send you the cash. And uh, that's going to be our contribution to your cause. And uh, in the remaining couple, three minutes, floor is yours. Tell us what, you know, what you want our audience to hear. Yeah, well, first off, thank you, Sergio. It's been an honor to meet you as well, and I really appreciate your donation. Um, I don't know if you want me to tell you the charity now, but it's going to be Shelter yeah, yeah, go ahead, because, you know, about 20,000 people is going to watch this. You may get more. You may get more. Uh, yeah. You know, I just got okay. off the phone with um, kind of the director of this place that I've been looking for, and um, it's called Shelter House in Cincinnati. There's a men's and a women's. They do. They work with homeless and, you know, shelter them throughout the night and feed them as well. And it just I was like, that's exactly who I want to support. And, you know, it sounds like a great cause. So uh, they do a great job in Cincinnati and um, your two hundred dollars. I was I think they would really appreciate the uh, donation and, and help out a lot there. Um, as far as any any last words I want to say is, like you mentioned, it doesn't take a whole lot. Um, certainly, I think having the platform I have, you know, being a professional athlete, I think that has what has kind of made it catch fire so quickly, you know, it might be hard for, you know, someone else that doesn't have the platform I do to, you know, really spread this message as far. But if anything that somebody takes away from this message is, yeah, it doesn't, you don't have to do something tremendous. I literally, I loaded an app, I hopped on a bike, made a couple extra bucks and, you know, just try to put a smile on someone's face. That was, you know, I kind of the full intent at the end of it. And, um, you know, you can do something in your own unique way. It doesn't have to be even to that, you know, extreme, just maybe, you know, hold the door open for somebody, compliment somebody throughout the day, uh, mow your neighbor's yard without them asking or, um, do the dishes before your, your mom gets home. You know, it doesn't, you don't have to do something otherworldly and you just, if one person just does one act of kindness, you know, maybe that could have a little bit of a ripple effect and someone else kind of gives it back and, and pays it forward going forward and, uh, just kind of turns into a snowball. So um, that would be something that I would hope just, um, you know, people take away from this and uh, hopefully inspire them to get back in their own way. Well, much appreciated. You know, here he is, Mr. Drew Crisman from the Cincinnati Bengals. You know, I, I'm going to give you a nickname if you don't mind, right? I'm Go going to call it. you the Dashing Punter. <laughs> punt Dash, I like it. There you go, Dashing Punter, because you do DoorDash and you punt. So I was like, hey, Dashing, Mr. Dashing Punter here. Look, this is this is a rare human being here. Okay. I am I am absolutely floored with what he's doing. He doesn't have to do any of it, but he's doing it. He's paying it forward. And uh it, it was again my pleasure and honor. And as Drew said, please, he has a charity now. He's working with the Cincinnati uh homeless shelter of his choice. We're gonna obviously put find the link and put it in our show notes. Whoever else wants to donate. You know, be generous, please, because this is an amazing man and, and with an amazing cause. And we're all here to support it for as long as we can. So um, with that said, um, here is, again, Mr. Drew Crisman, our fourth Show Me the Extra Mile Sunshine Award winner on the Ride Share Guide. Thank you, Drew, so much. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. No, thanks for having me on. Actually, uh, it's kind of funny that I'm number four, uh, the fourth winner because my football number is number four so no way. It, was, it was meant to be <laughs> there, you go. there you go again thank you so much uh we'll keep in touch and uh um you know god bless you your family your newborn um you know you're an amazing human all right thank you sergio god bless you as well